You don't need others to make you feel good about yourself. This is a really common thing that I've noticed a lot of people fall victim to, where they don't really work on becoming happy and feeling good about themselves on their own. They instead wait to get that from their relationships. That's why so many people feel incredibly lonely and lost in life when they're single, because they're waiting for someone to basically save them, to make them feel happy and good about themselves. But this is a huge mistake because it's something we can all provide to ourselves. We don't need to wait for other people to do this for us, but so many people do. I don't know whether that's because they don't even realize they can do this on their own or because they're too lazy to do that. I mean, laziness does seem to be incredibly common. I get a lot of excuses in my comment sections that kind of pain me to see, but yeah, I don't know which one it is more than the other. It's probably a mixture of the two, but make sure you don't fall victim to this yourself. It's a really good goal to have where you should strive to become happy on your own before you strive or before you attempt to enter into relationships. I would say that's something I've learned is even kind of a prerequisite for healthy relationships. Both partners need to be happy on their own and then come together and now they'll be able to create a healthy partnership because they won't be outsourcing their happiness and all their emotional needs to their partner. Instead, they'll be able to handle that on their own and then kind of come together with their partner to create something beautiful, not a codependent relationship where they're relying on their partner to meet all of their emotional needs because that's really unfair to the partner. Nobody wants to be in control of somebody else's happiness, at least healthy people don't want that. Manipulators would love that because it'll make you dependent on them. So I mean, this is one of the reasons why it's so bad to not work on this before you get into a relationship because it could easily open the door to you getting into a relationship with a master manipulator who's going to basically own you and control you. And you don't want that. So the more you work on yourself, you can avoid that. But beyond being manipulated, this habit can also turn you away or more so it'll turn healthy people away from you. If they sniff that, or sense, <laughs> that's a better way of putting it. If they sense that you are one of those people who outsources all your emotional needs and your happiness and fulfillment in life to your partner, that's gonna scare away healthy people, people who you could create healthy relationships with because they don't want that burden. They don't want to be responsible for making you feel good about yourself. Nobody truly wants that who is a good part for you as I've already mentioned. So you really ought to work on this. And the way you can do that is just by realizing you can meet your emotional needs. You can kind of treat yourself like your own therapist. It does take work and I would say definitely delve into psychology, learn about common therapy practices. But once you do both of those things, you can apply what you've learned for yourself. Like you don't need to wait for other people to do that for you. You can even have conversations with yourself. Now you can have them out loud, but I wouldn't suggest doing that in public. People will think you're crazy. But what I like to do is have conversations in my head where I'm basically talking to myself and kind of helping myself through my issues. I know to some of you this may sound insane, but it really isn't. You're just being there for yourself. You're being your own friend. You're helping yourself. And that's really powerful because you're not always going to have other people around you to help you, right? So you should be able to help yourself and you should want to help yourself as well. So get into that habit of kind of being like your own therapist, being able to talk about your emotions with yourself, to be able to analyze them and just go through them so that way they can be released. You don't always need to rely on other people for this. I'm definitely not saying that you shouldn't have other people in your life that you can talk about this with. That's definitely important. I'm just saying I understand not everybody has people they can trust to that level. I get that. So in those situations, realize you can do this for yourself. And it's tremendously helpful because it will make it so you can be happy and feel good about yourself on your own. You're not going to need to outsource all of your emotional needs to other people, whether it be relationship partners, which that can create a lot of issues I've already gone over, or even your friends or your family members, which you can sometimes tend to overburden if you're going through a lot. But at the end of the day, you really should just strive to surround yourself with people who can handle your emotions. But 
it is very helpful to be able to kind of move through them on your own before you then bring them to others just so that yeah you're not kind of bringing other people into like a chaotic storm more so you've kind of reduced the storm to now being kind of more like a I don't know I don't know what a small version of a storm is but that <laughs> whatever that would be that's what you want where instead of it being like a crazy thunderstorm you're inviting other people and maybe you're just inviting them into like a heavy downpour there we go that's a good way of putting it so yeah that's what you should strive to do strive to be able to kind of work through your emotions on your own to be able to be happy in your own company before you get into relationships it will help you avoid so many common issues that stem from people placing all of their emotional needs and all of their happiness and fulfillment in life on their partner and one last added tidbit that it can help you with is it can also prevent you from getting back with an ex who's not good for you. So yeah, <laughs> just another added benefit because you'll be able to be happy on your own so you won't feel like you need to go back to them to, to feel wanted and like good about yourself all over again or to be happy. There's a common thing people often say where when they're going back to someone who's not really good for them or even just to justify staying with someone who's not good for them people will often say but they make me feel happy or they make me feel good about myself and that's good and all but that's kind of just a prerequisite for any decent relationship right like somebody making you feel good that should be kind of a more bare minimum expected thing so that's not really a good argument in my opinion because bad people can make you feel good about yourself and that's not difficult to do so whenever people say that i just think like why can't you feel good about yourself on your own why can't you be happy on your own and then find someone who's a good match for you rather than going back to this person who's bad for you just because you're outsourcing your emotional needs to them and they're all your you know all you're familiar with so they're meeting your needs that you can't meet on your own so you're stuck with them and yeah but i won't get into that that's more a topic for another video but anyway i hope you guys understand what i'm driving at here the whole point of this video is that you should not outsource feeling good about yourself to other people do that on your own you don't need others to do that for you that's pretty much all i have for you guys in this video i hope you enjoyed this one if you like topics like this be sure to subscribe for more otherwise the easiest way you can help me out is just to throw a like and a comment on the video for the algorithm and I will see you guys in the next video. Arrivederci!